Welcome to lecture number 19 for ECE 463 Modern Control, Full Order Observers. Now, here's a problem for you. Pole placement requires knowledge of all the system states. What if you can't measure some of the states? Uh, for example, you used to work at GE aircraft engines, and the temperature of the flame is one of your states. The combustor temperature is hotter than the melting point of titanium. So that's a problem. You have a hard time measuring that. If you put a sensor in there, it would just melt away. But you need that state. I need to know it in order to use full state feedback. So if I can't measure it, what can I do? Well, if I know the system dynamics, I know the system input, I know the system output, can I determine what the states are? And the answer is actually yes. That's a full order observer. That's the topic of this lecture. Now what a full order observer looks like is the following. I've got the dynamics of the plant. Your x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, assuming the d matrix is zero, which is usually the case. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to have a model that's exactly the same as the plant. It's got the same input, same a, b, c matrix, same output, Ideally, if I have the same system, same input, I should have the same states. Uh, but there might be different initial conditions, and the model won't be perfect. So the A matrix will be a little bit off. Again, there's nonlinearities. Uh, the system changes slightly with temperature. So what I'll do is I'll take the estimated output, take the actual output, take the difference in the two, and take that difference and feed it back into the states and make this adjustment. So here I've got a feedback loop. H is my observer gain, analogous to the full state feedback control gain, Kx. Pick H so that the observer tracks the plant. So here's the observer dynamics, exactly the same as the plants, with a six extra term. That's H times the difference between the actual output and the estimated output. Uh, to find H, go through the following derivation. Let's define E to be the error between the actual states and the estimated states. I want to force E to zero. By doing so, I'm forcing the estimated states to converge to the plant states. Then what can happen is that if these are the same, when I implement my control law e equals minus kx times x, as long as xc is equal to x, it really doesn't matter which one I use. If they're identical, I can just use the estimated states. Those I know. Those are from my observer. So the derivation again continues as follows. I'll take the difference between the actual state and the estimated state. Take the difference in the dynamics, gives you x dot minus x e dot. I got my plant dynamics, x dot equals ax plus bu. The estimator dynamics, or observer dynamics, ax e plus bu. Um, minus i, minus h y minus y e. Uh, combining this, that's the derivative of the error. Bringing these two a's together gives me a times the error. bu cancels with bu, so that goes away. And I've got h, y is equal to cx, y e is c times the estimated x. Bring these together, I got e dot is a minus hc times e. Now notice a couple things about this. If I can pick h to make this stable, then the error will be driven to zero as time goes to infinity. If the error is zero, then my estimator states converge to the plant states. The second thing to note is there is no u here. That means these states are uncontrollable. That's actually good. I want the observer states to track the plant states regardless of what the input is. And that's what this is showing. I don't care what the input is. I can use any feedback control law that I want. It doesn't affect the error states. So that brings up the next question. How do you find h? Well, there's m many ways of doing that. We currently have pole placement in our tool belt. So let's force the solution, or force the problem to fit the solution. I'm going to use pole placement to find h. But the problem is pole placement is designed for a minus bkx. This is a minus hc. This isn't in the same form. So a trick you can do, let's take a minus hc transposed. If I do that, back from linear algebra, this becomes a transpose, 
We do transpose HC, I get C transpose H transpose. This is now in the same form of A minus BKX. A becomes A transpose, B becomes C transpose, and KX is H transpose. So I'll just use Bhaskara to place the poles of A transpose minus C transpose H transpose. And what I get is H transpose. Now there are limitations. Bhaskara only works if the system's controllable, meaning the rank of your controllability matrix B, AB, A squared B, AQB, so on, is N. Substituting A transpose C transpose for A and B means that I am only going to be able to design my observer if the rank of C transpose, A transpose, C transpose, and so on is N. Transposing this gives you the observability matrix C, CA, C CA squared, and so on. So again, not too surprisingly, I can only design a full order observer, or else I can only place the poles arbitrarily for a full order observer if the system's observable, which you probably could probably guess that. Once you're done, I have the plant and the observer. In block diagram form, here's what it looks like. I've got my plant, x dot equals ax plus bu, y equals cx, the observer, the estimated state, x e dot equals ax e plus bu, uh, estimated y is c times estimated x, and I have this feedback loop in here. In terms of state space, this becomes your states being x and xe, x dot equals ax plus bu, the estimated x, xe dot equals hc times x, there's xe dot is h times c times x, a minus hc times estimated x, so the xe dot is axe, here's an h minus h times cxe, so there's your a minus hc times xe, plus b times u. And the output is y, c times x. So let's do a couple examples of the observer. Uh, let's look at the fourth order heat equation and see can I build an observer to determine all four states only measuring the last state, only measuring the tip temperature. Well, first I want to check the controllability, actually check the observability. Uh, the rank of C, CA, CA squared, CA cubed is four. This system's observable, so I can build a full order observer. Uh, next, where to place the observer poles. Um, again, I can put them anywhere I want. Just for fun, let's put them at minus one, two, three, and four. Again, it's kind of arbitrary. If I do that, the observer gains are one, two, two, three. And as a check, the eigenvalues of A minus HC are where I put them. Minus one, two, three, four. The augmented system then is A, your A matrix, zeros matrix h times c, a minus h times c. The b matrix, I'm going to call this a8 and b8 since they have eight states. b8 is just b and b. Again, whatever goes to the plant, same input goes to the observer. And the poles of the net system are the poles of the observer, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4, and the poles of the plant. Again, I'm not using any feedback, so the plant poles don't shift. Uh, note that the augmented system is not controllable. If I find the rank of this mess, your B, A, B, A squared B, and so on, the rank is only 4. That's actually expected. The observer poles are not controllable. The observer is going to con converge to the plant states no matter what I do. Controllability says I can drive the states anywhere. I could, If it was controllable, I could make the observer states different than the plant states. This is not controllable meaning I can't do that. I can't force the observer to diverge from the plant, and that's actually good. I want the observer to track the plant, and that's what it does. Um, if I want to simulate the 8x8 system, I can use that step 3 command. This is why we had that x0 in step 3. That's planning ahead for now when we start using observers. Suppose the plant states start at 0, and the observer states are something different. Can I force the observer states to track the plant states? 
So using our favorite step three command, I'll take the step response of the eight by eight system, A8, B8, C8, D8, where C8 and D8 plot all eight poles, or eight, all eight states. Uh, run it for 10 seconds. Here's my initial condition. And R is just a step input. The plant states start here at zero. The observer states are somewhere else. And very quickly, the observer states start following the plant states. And if you want, you could make the observer poles complex. I have no idea why you'd want to do this, but you can do anything with the observer. I can put the poles anywhere. If I really wanted to, I could make the observer poles complex. If I did that, then the observer poles converge to the plant poles, but they oscillate while doing so. Again, I have no idea why you'd want to do that, but you could if you wanted. So let's try that on the 20th order model for the heat equation. So here I've got the 20th order model. I've got my A matrix, uh, diagonals minus 50, optidals 25. Here's my observer, my state estimator. This is a fourth order state estimator. I'm going to estimate the voltages at nodes 5, 10, 15, and 20. It gives me this model. My observer gain. And my input is just going to be 1 plus 2 sine of t. Again, I'm just going to pick anything I want. The input doesn't really matter. It doesn't affect the observer. The observer will converge to the plant no matter what. I'm also making the initial conditions. Uh, the plant is initially at 1 volt everywhere. The observer is at 0. Uh, where's the observer? There we go. Observer is at zero. Oh, there it is. Uh, when I run the simulation, I'm going to have the plant just do the normal response for that input. The observer is going to try to follow it. The observer states are x dot. The estimated states are x e dot is a e x e plus b e times the input plus h times the difference between the output and the estimated output. I integrate the plant states, integrate the state estimator states, the observer states, and then plot. And here's what it looks like. Slide this over. So the blue line is the 20th order system. The green line is my state estimator. It's a straight line because I'm only estimating the voltages at nodes 5, 10, 15, and 20. And if you notice, they converge very quickly. I'll run this again after this finishes. So here's the plant states. Again, the observer state starts at 0. The plant starts at 1. The observer states start to converge. And there's a little bit of difference because I've got a 20th order system versus a 4th order system. There's a slight modeling error, so that shows up as a slight difference. But the that's accounted for with the feedback gain h. That's forcing the observer states to converge to the plant states. And let's run that one more time. Oops. Let's bring this down so I don't block the screen. Running that one more time. Notice the plant starts at 1, the observer starts at 0, and very quickly the observer states are brought back to the plant states and they converge. So only measuring the tip temperature and knowing the input, I'm estimating what's the state at node 5, 10, and 15. That's information I'm going to need if I use full state feedback. So that's one example. Let's do a second example. Let's take the Carton pendulum system or the gantry system. Can you stabilize the gantry system with only one measurement? Actually, can you estimate all the states of the gantry system with only measurement? And if the system's observable, then yes, you can. So to do that, let's design a full order observer for the gantry system. Uh, first option, let's measure the angle. Well, in order for the observer to work, it's got to be observ observable. 
So let's check the, check the rank of the observability matrix. If the output is 0, 1, 0, 0, measuring angle, the rank of the observability matrix is 2. And that tells me the system is not observable from angle. I cannot estimate all four states. So I need a different measurement. Is it observable from position? So I'll check the observability matrix, and the answer is yes. Uh, that's kind of surprising. I can tell you what the angle is just by measuring position. That's not something I would guess, but the math says you can do it. And if you check the eigenvalues of the observability matrix, uh, they're all pretty far from zero, so that's pretty easy to do. Again, my intuition is just wrong. There is information there, the mathematics, the observer can figure out what the angle is from position. All I need to know is position. So, if I measure position, find the observability gain. And here again, I'll place the poles at minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. Again, for lack of anything better. I get my observability gain. Then my 8 by 8 system. Here's your A matrix, B matrix, H times C, A minus H times C. And if I simulate in MATLAB, say the initial condition on the plant is 0, initial condition on the observer is 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, find the step response, and here I'm going to kick it for one second, then let it come to rest. Here's what I get. I kick it, and the cart starts drifting off to the right. There's position. Uh, velocity is one of these states. It's probably this green one. And then I have angle and angle dot. They're just swinging back and forth. And note the observer states are converging to the actual states. Again, I can simulate that. Let's go to uh, Gantry 19. I've got the Gantry system. The observer, again, has the observer dynamics. There's your A, A matrix, B matrix, C matrix. My initial condition is going to be 0 plus 0.5. I just want to show that there's a difference in the initial conditions. Here's my H matrix. Then I'm going to have u is just 2 cosine t. Push the cart back and forth with a cosine function. Again, u doesn't really matter. Just going to pick something. Calculate the gantry dynamics. And here's my observer. The estimated state xe dot is aexe plus beu plus h times the output, in which case this is actually position, x of 1, minus the estimated output. Integrate x, integrate the observer, and plot. So here's what it looks like. I run this puppy, and there's a difference between the observer state and the actual state. The green one's the observer, the red is the plant. And it's going back and forth. That's my forcing function is to cosine of t. After a little bit of time, the observer states Converge the plant states, including the angle. Uh, notice I'm not measuring angle. I'm determining what it is based upon position and input. The observer error is driven to zero, forcing the observer to converge the plant. So even though I am not measuring angle, I can tell you what angle is. That's what the ob observer does for you. And there's a little bit of difference in the two. Again, the plant actually has the Coriolis forces, the nonlinearities, the observer doesn't have take into account. So that's why they diverge slightly. But you can see the two actually do converge. The plant states converge the observer states. If I give it a different initial condition, uh, let's just do this. Plus 0 0.2 times... I'm give it a random error, and let her run. Again, the green line is the observer. The red one is the plant. Fairly quickly, the observer is driven to the plant. At that point, if the observer states and the plant states are the same, it really doesn't matter which one I use for full state feedback. I need to know position, angle, and their derivatives. If my observer has converged the plants, I can now use the observer states instead of the plant states.
And just as a sidelight, uh, here I'm using a modified display routine. This display routine, I pass it both the plant states X and the state estimator states XE. And I draw the pendulum twice. Uh, XE is drawn in green and the actual position is drawn in red. And what that looks like, just in case you're interested, that would be gantry display 3. So again, I pass it both X and X observer. Uh, using the observer states, draw the ball and beam system. Then using the plant states, draw the ball and beam system. The observer is drawn in green, the plant is drawn in red. So in summary, if a system is observable from the output, you can estimate all of the system states using only the system input, the system output, and the dynamics of the system. The result is termed a state estimator or full order observer. And the block diagram is as follows. That's lecture number 19 for ECE 463 Modern Control, full order observers.